if you look carefully at um, not only the the poles and the pro projections and so forth, but just at the at the landscape, it was always extremely likely that the Democratic candidate would be elected this year, uh, and it became especially likely uh, once there was an epic financial meltdown. Um, and uh, so, you know, if Hillary had been the nominee, I think she would have won. She might have won with an even bigger margin uh, than Obama did. If John Edwards, minus the scandals, had been uh, nominated, uh, I think he would have won. Uh, I think it would have been hard for a, for a Democrat uh, to lose this election. And in fact, the, the best chance to lose the election was probably to nominate uh, Barack Obama uh, because of the, just the unknown uh, of what race would do in, in this election. Uh, and the, the great uh, surprise, in a way, uh, to me was, and I admired him from the first time I saw him, which was like most people at the uh, 2004 convention, the great surprise to me was what an extraordinarily good candidate he was. Uh, an extraordinarily good politician, but not just a politician, uh, an inspirational figure for, for many, many people. Um, and I, I think because he was so good, the issue of race, I don't think it disappeared, uh, and it certainly meant an enormous amount to uh, people of color and, and many others who care about people of color. But I, I think he became, in a way, someone who just didn't seem, race seemed not to be a factor in, in the way he behaved and the, way, the positions he took and the, uh, the way he campaigned. And people who might have been made uncomfortable about race found him comfortable. The length of the campaign has familiarized people with him and made him uh, a more... Um, comfortable and, uh, you know, familiar figure than is often the case when a politician um, uh, takes office. Um, I think there is, there is still a lot of racism. There are still people going on about the Reverend Wright and um, uh, um, spreading, you know, he's t t in, in Texas, this is astonishing to me, 23% of the population still believes that he's a secret Muslim. And that is well above the national average of 13%, which is <laughs> astonishing, given that it's not true. Um, and it has been debunked repeatedly. That shows you, I mean, that's racism. That's racism, the plain old anti-black racism mixed with kind of the new xenophobic anti-Islam thing. Um, so I imagine that there's a lot of that in, in people's minds, not everybody's minds. And there's, you know, there's the whole machinery of talk radio. And if you ever want to think, you know, it's, you know, now we're all happy and it's like Bambi and the Bluebirds, just listen to, listen to talk radio for a while and it's just staggering how um, full of vicious, you know, vituperation it is. Um, <laughs> But nonetheless, I think you know he is going to be the president, and and I think people want uh, to. He starts out with a lot of credibility. I think I think people want to. Um, okay, let's move on. Let's start governing and fixing things and all like that. So I don't think that it's going to be like, you know, if he makes one little mistake, everybody's going to go back to their inner racist. The right business had the potential to destroy, really to utterly destroy his candidacy. And I think that the key there was that uh, we talked about is, is that, that in, his, in his search, in his creation of his own identity, in his search for own identity, uh, Obama has thought so profoundly uh, about, about this subject. And that speech, I think what that speech showed people uh, especially the elites, because it's kind of hard to say how many people actually saw or read it, although there were several million hits on, on YouTube, I think. It was, the, it, was the, it was the detachment of that speech. It was the fact that he was, he, it was the, that was a great piece of public education. The fact that he, 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 was, looking, he was looking at this problem uh, from above and describing it 
in a, in a way that made it comprehensible, made it comprehensible. He wasn't stuck in it. Uh, he, th this is, this is, this is what I, kind of what I was getting at before, and, and he, he, he um, He's immersed in it, he's immersed in the subject, he's, he's thought about it, he's lived it, uh, but that detachment, not really an emotional, that intellectual detachment about it, that ability to, to, uh, to describe it and make it, make it comprehensible and therefore not terrifying uh, was crucial, absolutely crucial. And the financial crisis, I think he probably would have won the election narrowly without the financial crisis. What the financial crisis did was to provide a, was to was to provide a drama in which he uh, in which he laid to rest fully, and but particularly by contrast with McCain, any worries. In a sense, it laid to rest the national security issue. We could see how how these two men behave when the going gets tough and when when things get scary. And we saw one, uh, who, one who essentially panicked and one who, who didn't. And uh, it's, it's that more than the fear, I think more than the fear of, of actual financial ruin for, for, for people that, uh, that, that, that helped him. There's a uh, theory uh, of political realignment that <clears throat> uh, goes back to the political scientist V.O. Key that uh, posits that uh, there are certain moments in, in American political life in which there is a critical realignment of party strength. Uh, 1896, 1932, 1854, 6 or 8, uh, maybe 1968. Uh, and the question really is, is this one of those moments? And uh, certainly the results of this election and the contrast between this election and actually any democratic election since 1964 suggests that that is really a possibility. Um, but there's not really any way to know at this point uh, whether, whether this tremendous democratic victory is the product of a particularly aberrant moment or whether it's the beginning of a, of a new era in which uh, the sort of free market uh, anti-government uh, orthodoxy that's dominated both parties to some degree for the last 30, 40 years, uh, whether that's over.